at the thumbs up. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. And if you could please rise to state the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Does anyone, is anyone here to speak in public comment? Not necessarily about our, our clerk, but just in general public comment. And Michael, you'll, I think you're going to have to tell me if anyone's. We have people, may have people join virtually all set. Yeah, there are people virtually, no one's asking for your reference. Well, now we're going to get to the main event. <laughs> we welcome our long term town clerk, Barbara Stats, here and her family, who's here. Will you tell us who's here with your family and we know something? Absolutely. This is my grandson, Zach, who was not able to make it to the reception because he was called to work and had to give up his vacation day. My lovely daughter-in-law, Tracy, and my husband, Donald, in the back. And of course, fire chief staff standing. Mm -hmm. And I have to say with special heartfelt thanks, Stephanie, Con Stephanie Connolly from my office and Carol B. Grove from the office. I'm very everyone. appreciative of them I'm coming. I'm glad you're here. We're going to say a few words. You're on the hot seat again. <laughs> We're going to say a few words. I'm going to turn it over first. Michael Gilbert, so you can give us a little bit of your history and your background. We're going to give you a chance to talk to you. So this is um, this is a very special occasion. We're sorry to see you go, but we're happy that you're we're happy that you're you know, you're going to be around, but also doing different things now. And so we'll turn over to you first, Mr. Gilberto, and why don't you give us a little bit of Barbara's background? Sure. <coughs> I'm going to start with an apology to the Stats family because I identified a son but didn't name the son at the retirement party, so Jake was there. Yes. And I identified Jake as Tracy's daughter <laughs> and not as the chief and Tracy's, yes. and Tracy's son. <laughs> and not as the chief and Tracy's son. So I apologize. And uh, Zach, thanks for being here this evening. So I uh, just want to correct the record on that. So let me just say, as I was coming into that special, beautiful, wonderful, well-attended event, I came in the door and I saw Barbara. Hi! Oh, hi! How are you? And I was like, Hi! You know? It was for her grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him coming in, but this is okay. <laughs> she was happy to see me too. And now I'm here to see Jake. <laughs> and then she hugged your, she, she hugged your son. You know. So, anyway. One of those moments. <laughs> Timing is everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, you're absolutely right. And uh, we've had a, a couple of opportunities to recognize Barbara as she um, uh, concludes her, her formal service uh, to the town of North Reading. As you indicated, uh, Barbara is a 40 year employee of the town, 24 years of which served as town clerk. Um, and we've all been, I think, as a community, so blessed to be served by her. We are very happy for her and excited for her and wish her. Um, a, a long, a happy, and healthy retirement, but we will miss her. Um, Barbara, uh, as I think you can all imagine, is a very well-respected town clerk within the Association of Town Clerks Statewide. Um, and I have heard from folks um, over the past few months um, how highly she's regarded. And um, you know, I think they will miss her as well as a resource that she is <laughs> to answer questions for folks statewide. I know that her phone often rings, and she keeps me posted as to what's being discussed on the listservs, and you know, I'm sure at various times you've been called to weigh in and answer and or correct <laughs> things that are being said. Um, you know, one of the things that I've heard, you know, over the past few weeks as we, um, you know, wish Barbara well is um, how professional everybody says that, you, that she is and that you are. Um, you know, you handle yourself so capably with so much pressure. Um, with you're talking, you're talking about elections, or for that matter, public records and the everyday operations of, of the office. Um, and, um, you know, I, I said at the formal event that we had um, a few weeks ago that, um, you know, that for, um, for me in my position, that's so many different things that you're thinking about in any one, one day. 
Um, but there hasn't been a single day in eight years I've had to worry about the town clerk's office uh, <laughs> because of everything that you've done. And I know that we are in good hands moving forward too with uh, Stephanie and, um, and Carol um, as we go through the transition. I know that we'll be, we'll be just fine. Um, and you know, just a final thing that I'll, I'll offer, um, and I shared this privately with um, you know with Barbara on her last day. But you know, um, wherever and whenever you know my time comes to retire, if I could have even half of the the, the standing in the community and um, and, and the, the positive comments and the professional reputation, um, I, I would be just fine with that. Um, because we're so long as we can. Um, and um, just a quick note before we continue along, too, for folks who have been asking, we are in the midst of the hiring process uh, for uh, Barbara's successor. I know folks are asking. Um, and um, you know, for the time being, I want to recognize Stephanie, who has stepped forward, is willing to help us out as the, the statute, statute says temporary town clerk. Is that correct? Um, and Carol, as well, who's, I know, been uh, uh, ready, willing, and able. And um, I hope to have some more formal news uh, in the coming days with regard to um, the, the transition. I want to recognize Barbara, who uh, deserves nothing more than a 100% retirement uh, at this point, but has uh, offered to help us out uh, as needed um, from time to time along the way as we go through the transition. So that could be a mistake. <laughs> so, I want to thank you. I'll take your lead, Steve. Okay? <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary. Well, since I've been hanging around here, the longest, and poor Barbara has had to see my name on ballots, uh, well, even before she came here, but it still is, uh, I've had an awful lot of interactions with Barbara over the years, for sure. I, I first got elected to public office a long time ago, like 49 years ago, 48, 49 years ago. You know, so she's had to endure me as well as... Uh, and it hasn't been easy. And it hasn't been easy. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not an easy person to deal with at times, particularly when it comes to electrical things. You know, there's a passion there. Uh, but I have mellowed. You must admit. But, you know, for all of us, you know, we keep getting these things, you know. I almost want to give them back to you, along with probably the other 30 years worth that I haven't filed yet in my, in my, uh, in my book yet. But uh, with some sort of a... Snowy rainy day, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> uh, and, and again, for all of us too, we've all been reminded just up until the last day, you know, that we needed to take the ethics exam. We had to get our campaign and finance uh, reports in. Uh, and for years, I was a delinquent. And for the last <laughs> ten years or so, I've been much better. Much and, better. And it's, and it's because of her prodding and her patience, and uh, which she has exercised for over forty years. So, uh, I also remember when Barbara came on board and what the office was like then. The personalities that she had to deal with at that particular time, and the people that she had to work with, which was difficult, and she's always handled it with grace and uh, professionalism, and uh, fortunately got rewarded 24 years ago to become the town clerk, but she did her penance for sure. Uh, but we know what I'm talking about. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But, uh, but, but again, you know, your professionalism is certainly you know, uh, unmatched. We've always handled the dignity and diplomacy has always been your strong suit, even even when dealing with difficult people like myself. Mm -hmm. um, but well deserved. 40 years here uh, serving the community. Uh, not many people get to say that. Not many people get to uh, uh, go that far and then still get to retire and hopefully a long and healthy uh, retirement for you and your husband. Um, very tolerant people, your family too, and putting up with the long hours and it's not just a nine to five job. Found out even with the most recent election. This is your exiting another special election that had to be handled. And again, we had great turnout. Uh, ran very smoothly. And uh, technology, what's changed in the last 40 years for you? Wow, right? Yeah, everything. 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 Everything's changed. And again, it's been seamless here, and it's been seamless for a reason. It's because we've had Barbara to help um, handling the situation. We haven't had to worry about it. The feedback has always been positive. Congratulations, good health, and uh, enjoy the family, enjoy your time off, and really, if the phone rings, you know, caller ID is very good. <laughs> don't pick up, don't pick up, because you've earned it. Thanks. Good again. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Walker? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I missed your previous event. I was literally out of the country, but um, uh, I did have the chance to read over the article that Maureen happened to write here. So I think it's really important that I just, uh, I'm just going to quote Maureen one paragraph so that people get the 
full effect about the details and what you deal with on a regular basis. So again, I'm quoting Maureen from the transcript. During that time, she has administrated hundreds of oaths of office and has run countless elections, town meetings with all their warrant articles, special elections, override votes, recounts, and kept their voter rolls up to date. She has organized the annual town census, kept track of thousands of rabies certificates, and overseen all of the town's vital statistics, births, marriages, deaths. She also ensured that the state's open meeting law is adhered to, including the posting of every meeting agenda and all the public hearing notices. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, you are democracy to me. You, 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 you know the rules, you follow the rules, you ensure that we follow the rules. And it's, it's, just, it's just a wonderful thing. I, I, congratulations. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. So I have an interesting story, uh, Mrs. Stas, I don't know if she remembers, but I moved into town in December 2017. So my first town meeting was June 2018. Now, as someone who you know refuses to open their mail <laughs> and heed the call when it says you really do have to register, because I didn't know. So I just show up. And you know, I'm just like, yeah, I'm resident at yeah, 122M. And they're like, yeah, you don't live here. You live in Malden. I'm like, yeah, but I don't. And I'm trying to show my license. Like, yeah, that's great. So Barbara was able to take a very irritated person who didn't realize that, you know, because I got sent to the bleachers you know, section, <laughs> visitors. So, but she was kind enough to go through detail of exactly what I needed to do and where I needed to go. And, you know, to kind of the piggyback the point of, you know, Diffusing a situation of somebody who just moved in having their first experience being like yeah We're just gonna pretend you don't live here because you didn't sign the right paperwork and I I still remember it to now because it was just um, It's funny fast forward a couple of years and I went to run for select board and it was just it all started with someone explaining to me the most like basic thing that because I had never I grew up in Malden lived in Malden I never had a reason to change, like I didn't even know that it wasn't automatic. I just thought that when you told the RMV, you were automatically, you know, registered everywhere. So I, you know, I really appreciated that because I feel like there's definitely other people you deal with that would have been like, yeah, you needed to sign the form, get away from me, it's too busy. Because it was crazy, right? And, and actually, in a way, you kind of saved me not to let me slip in because I wanted no part of that public uh, safety role argument that <laughs> night. So I was kind of happy to be over here while everything was going on. So, but uh, but, yeah, but thank you again, and uh, you always help me out ex ex with the green book. You know, I still have it. I only have a few of these, but um, it was definitely overwhelming at first. And without Bob, I probably would have lost a couple months just trying to get, you know, up to speed. So I really do appreciate it. And, and enjoy retirement. Thank you. So I was um, able to, I believe, make the um, party that they had. Party. And um, it was so nice. It was just, it was a beautiful time and well deserved. Um, and I was able to speak, and I will kind of repeat. Um, a little bit of what I said um, about all of the descriptions that people give for Barbara. Um, professionalism, wealth of knowledge, capable, dignity, diplomacy, I mean it just goes on and on. But my big word is confidence. Um, always have confidence in whatever information you give anytime I've ever needed to come and ask anything. I know I'm getting the exact information I need. And so that confidence is so important. And even for us as a board, um, during COVID, we had elections and, you know, you would come on to our Zoom meeting and, you know, we were completely confident in whatever it was you were telling us that we needed to do. So that's huge. And I thank you for that. Um, and just a, I spoke also about um, that I had just sent an email to Barbara and how prompt it came back to me and how I got more information from her than I even needed. And her little quick fun wit said, that's because I didn't want you emailing me back. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Thank you so much. I'm going to miss your smiling face, and I wish you all the luck and joy. Thank you. And I'm going to, I'm going to probably be repetitive about these comments, but I, I'm going to use Steve's word. When I was thinking earlier today about our honoring you here and that amazing legacy of 40 years, which people do not stay at a place for that long. So that in and of itself is a mech, a, an incredible accomplishment. But I thought it was the same word Steve used, just a gracious, gracious person. I thought you're a gracious guardian of our right to vote and how important that is. Something I'm preaching to the preacher, you know this already, but of all of these unbelievable changes you've seen mm -hmm. over these past four decades and the election cycles over the past eight, 12 years have been something enormous, totally out of the norm. And you don't just have to deal with our personalities and our flaws and our lateness in getting our stuff in which you keep. She was reminding us on the weekend, she wasn't even <laughs> working, but also the general public, all the different things that are going on, and then a pandemic, to top it all off, a <laughs> pandemic. So pivoting here and there, just changing direction, constantly changing direction. And Mrs. Gonzalez is right. Anytime we needed information, or anytime I needed information about anything, charter, bylaws, anything, election process, I can ask you, and it, it isn't even like I'll, I'll get back to you on it. It is just, you know it like the back of your hand. That's invaluable to the town, to us, to the citizens of the town. Just an amazing way that you effectuated your work. And your work was for us. All of us, we've all benefited by it. And we're so appreciative of you and your graciousness and your diplomacy in your professionalism, it's really a standard that we sh should all aspire to. And your whole staff is like that. They're just amazing to interact with. They're friendly. You never go there and you feel like you're putting someone out. They're always welcoming and whatever you need. And they're always even a go above and how are you? What's going on? You know, talking just about town things. And I don't think that people realize all of the things that you do as a town clerk or your, your office does for the city, for the citizens. So just a tremendous, tremendous, uh, you know, person for us to lose. We're happy that you're going to still be around. You should answer the phone call. <laughs> fair you, warning. If someone's calling you, fair warning, they're going to call you. you know. But um, we're, we're glad you're here, but we're also you know, happy that you're, you know, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, your family's going to get more of you than the rest of us do finally, right? And uh, we, we just wish you the best in everything that you do. And I do have, we did, we did pre I know they, they presented this to you, Leanne presented this to you at the, um, at the um, event. And it looked like you had a, ma a, ma a massive turnout at the event. And that was a great yeah, thing. I think your staff pulled that together. Yes, it was a really wonderful <laughs> tribute to you. And I hope so you enjoyed it. You know, even though we know you don't like to be on the hot seat. But, and this is just something that, that the town would like to present. Presented to Barbara Stetson. And it's a picture of the common and the flag, of course, on the common. Um, presented to Barbara Stetson in recognition of her 40 years of dedicated service to the town of North Reading, including 24 years as town clerk, given by the select board on behalf of a grateful community, January 28, 2022, and that was what was presented to you. So we thank you. We're going to give you a chance to talk, and then we'll take a brief recess. We, we have to get pictures. <laughs> but we think anyone in your family who would like to make comments to, or anyone that's here, you're, you're welcome to contribute to the tribute to, to Bob but Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it is definitely bittersweet, you know. So, um, Chairman Mandy Kelly and all members of the board and town administrator Gilberto, I want to thank you once again for this recognition and the picturesque plaque of North Reading, the town common, an instantly recognizable seat that embodies the, really the essence of our town. I don't think anyone can look at that and not feel that it's, it's just know, a representation of North Reading. I have been truly overwhelmed with the outpouring of well wishes 
from all of you, from our state officials, my coworkers, my extended family of election workers, and the entire community. I'm really not sure that I'm deserving of all the accolades that have come my way, but it is very satisfying for me to know that I have been able to befriend, guide, and assist so many people over the years. That is the true mission of being a public servant, to serve others equitably and with compassion, and I hope that if I do, in fact, have a legacy, that that is, that I have done it well. My family has been the most important part of my life, especially my husband, John. Without their support and understanding, I would not have been able to dedicate myself to doing what I have loved doing and being able to devote the time to do it. And it has been a personal privilege for me as a mother to have also had the opportunity to work alongside my son, the fire chief. I can't tell you that that tugs at my heartstrings. It's, a, it's something that doesn't happen and it's a unique situation. But there are so many other people that have a, had a part in my journey. Having the support of all the town administrators that I have worked with, past and present, and especially Mike Gilberto. The many select boards that have come and gone, and the various finance committees that have all been supportive of me and my office, and that has allowed the office to advance. Without the support of all of you, the office could not advance to the way that it has. So I'm really grateful for that, because any um, programs and things that I have wanted to start, including the code book, that was well received, and, and I really appreciate that, having the opportunity to do that. Things have changed. But as the saying goes, no one is an island. And so above all, I have to acknowledge my office staff, past and present, who have put up with me and endured alongside of me. Stephanie Connolly, who has, is the most recent addition to the office and has stepped up to take on new challenges. But especially Carol Crow who has been by my side for over two decades and deserves a medal for putting up with me. <laughs> Without the assistance and support of each of them and all of my past staff members, I would not have been able to do the job that I have done. I will forever be proud and grateful to have spent my career with the town of North Reading, to have had the privilege of serving as the town clerk, and hopefully earning the trust and the faith of the community along the way. For all of that, I will be eternally grateful. So thank you all very much. It's always been that. How are we going to do that? Did you stand over here? Yes, Maureen did. Maureen did. She was so gracious not yeah. to share with us. Maureen, you should stand back here to get it. Yeah, I'm going to stand here. Why don't we stand in front so no one gets hurt? Yeah. I should really bring it. Yes, he should. Yeah. 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 <laughs> picture framing is always an so, Okay, and so, you know you know about the prom pictures and the wedding pictures? <laughs> okay, you'll sit, yes, you got to turn. Yep. Turn your shoulder in. Shoulder to shoulder. Sh turn your shoulder this way, Mike. Alright. More? <laughs> Steve, a little, a little, a little. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Better? It's better. Okay. All right. <laughs> no glasses. Okay. No glasses. Okay. One, two, three. We're gonna get family in too, so don't. Yep. I'll <laughs> do that. It might be the only one. Two more. Yep. I have one job. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get set your family in the family yeah. photo too. Yep. Yeah. Whoever you'd like to have them. Yeah. Yeah. Should we set this up? Yeah, we'll just set this up. Go ahead. Yeah, right in the middle. <laughs> oh, I know. I can jump on the couch. Do you want to look at it? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure the family wants us in the picture. Yeah. Good point, Abel. Thank you. 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 Like, but in between the holes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay, so. Oh, yeah. That's a little, that's a little, yeah. Pull it a little bit. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. <laughs> I was just so going to suggest that. With us or without? With or without? Us. With or without? Us. <laughs> oh, everyone. everyone. The more the merrier, right? All right. I was going to say, whatever gets to shine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Come on, gang. Hold on. All right. Get back over here. We'll do the same thing. Yeah, that's fine. Just perfect. Yeah. Go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. Replay. Replay. Okay. I don't need cooties. Cooties. You just want to wait. I know. Stating a fact, though, not an opinion. Steve, you talk about technology change. And he was only when I started, and this so date me. There was no computer. Like, right. And we had a manual typewriter. A manual, not even an electric. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Yes. Thank you all. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't tell a woman what the age is. That's you never mention. No, but I, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not speaking of her age. My age. But by how old are your kids? But by by inference, or how old are your kids? 
It doesn't. It doesn't. Because here's your all your kids. Time, so you get What's that? No, I didn't. I'm gonna. Okay, if you keep that up, I'm gonna pull out that Reagan line when he where he's talked to who he talked to where he said, "I'm not gonna let your youthful inexperience become a factor in your." I never do that, so Leanne didn't know what that I know, I was like, what's happening? Do something Keep this open, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, that was a good, good pause. Yeah, that was fun. All right, so our next order of business is, is that really quarter past eight? Yeah. It is. For a little while. Um, the next order of business is the COVID-19 update. Why don't we do the 745? Yeah, I, I was, I, I was going to ask if, if my colleagues would permit that. <laughs> Mr. Gilbert, the one page is the public. No, um, no, I just found it. Okay. I think it so, starts on 10. Well, we're going to just jump over that right now to go to the public hearing, the 745 public hearing. I'm just going to read the notice. That Town of North Reading Select Board Notice of Public Hearing in accordance with Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws. The public hearing will be held by the Select Board on Monday, February 7, 2022, via virtual technology at 745 on the application of PH Wealth doing business as China Cuisine for the transfer of the common victuals, all alcohol license from China Cuisine. License to be exercised at 235 Main Street, North Reading, Massachusetts in a one-story building with approximately 4,000 square feet with kitchen, dining room, and restrooms, entrance and egress located in front and rear of the building. <coughs> the hearing may also be potentially held in person in room 14, Town Hall, 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Please refer to the calendar on the town website when the select board agenda for this meeting is posted. The meeting notice contains the virtual hearing uh, information and telephone information to join us virtually to dial by location. This is uh, by the select board January 27, 2022. And the information is in the packet and if you, you I know you are all here and if you could introduce yourselves please for the record. Yeah, me too. <coughs> kind of hard to follow Barbara's stats but we're going to do what we can here. <laughs> um, my name is Chris Coleman and I'm for, an attorney for the applicant. Uh, to my right is uh, Shan Shan Wu. She is the proposed manager. Uh, Victor Hu is the current owner. And Di Shang Zhu is also going to be one of the owners of the, uh, the restaurant. Uh, it's not a lot to change here. <coughs> Just a little overview. It's a 4,000 square foot space. Uh, seating will be unchanged. Uh, it's 86 seats. Occupancy is 95. There's no change in the liquor license hours. That's all Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 1 a.m and Sundays from noon to 1 a.m. Uh, but the, the uh, hours of operation also remain the same. Uh, they are currently Monday through Thursday, 11.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, it's Friday and Saturday, 11.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. and then on Sunday noon to 9 p.m. Uh, no change in the layout, uh, no change in the menu. In fact, uh, just about every employee that's currently there is going to remain. So you won't know, really see a lot of difference there. Uh, the proposed manager, Shan Shan Wu, uh, she has been working there uh, since October of last year and working under Victor and uh, learning as much about the operation as she can. She is uh, tips trained. She is a U.S. citizen. She's going to be there 40 hours plus every month, or every week rather. And uh, other than that, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions you have. Sure. Do the members have any questions? Mr. O'Leary, all set? No questions, but comments later. Okay. Mr. Wonder, any questions? I didn't have any questions. Mr. Studo, Mrs. Gonzalez, the menu stay the same? It is. <laughs> <laughs> so will Victor be out of the operations altogether after this transfer, if this transfer is approved? Well, he still is the owner of the building, so he'll be the way over there. He'll be there for consultation, and uh, Benjamin, his son, is going to be working there as a 20% owner. So I have a feeling he'll be around a little bit, but he has no official capacity. Okay. And, and Ms. Wu, yes. you've been there already, yes. working there yes. and learning the ropes, and your tips range, obviously. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the others, 
uh, newer um, principals, are they just trained as well? Yes. Will they be taking part in working there currently? It's not actually determined right now. So you'll keep the same employees that are there? That's correct. Now comments, I guess, or Mr. Gilbert, is there anything you'd like to add? I just have two questions. The first uh, it was brought to my attention. Page four of the application in media is zero missing in the delineation of the lease payments, the aggregate amount. You just don't want to check that. Um, it doesn't match what was in the, uh, the attachment, but it's for the terms are spelled out okay. in the attached document. I assume that that's the correct document. That is correct. Um, and then just uh, secondly, uh, my understanding is that in terms of the membership, the directors, there will be one director who will be listed but have a zero percent share in the ownership, is that correct? Oh, that is correct. That is uh, Victor's wife, May. Okay, if you could just explain that for us. Well, actually, no, she's actually, we've seen that before. But actually, she's the secretary, but she's not the director. Okay, she's a secretary, not a director. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no other questions. Okay, so she has an official position with the corporation, and she's also listed as the pre-condom application on page as the having an interest in the business, obviously, previously as well. Correct. That actually probably gives us a comfort to yeah. know that, that, that you're both hanging around and it's comforting to know you've been there and there really hasn't been any issues there at all, too. So, no, yeah. um, I have just a quick question, too. What is your experience in other establishments before coming to? So, um, my parents, they also own a uh, takeout restaurant, so I've been working there for, um, well, let's see, since. Um, 2010. Like, part Where part. is that? Right. It's in Somerville. Is it out to serve alcohol there? Or? No. No. Okay. Right. Are you leaving and there to work here? Yes. Full time? Yep. And also my parents, um, they will be helping um, us here too. Can't say. Questions or comments? Ms. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Edge, her parent is selling the restaurant in Somerville. This so, un as I understand, this so, they in the process already. So, okay. her parents going to come to work in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. so they're gonna help you now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help. We help. We help each other. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. All right. Comments, Mr. O'Leary. Well, I'm happy for Victor and, and May. I, I suppose you know, but uh, and, and I'm also uh, happy to hear the change going to retain ownership of the property and have a, an interest in what happens there because you've done a fantastic job of maintaining the property and keeping it in good shape and running a fabulous business and been a tremendous asset to the business community and the community as a whole and uh, you have big shoes to fill and expectations that are going to, you know, hopefully you can meet because uh, Victor and May has assimilated into this community uh, rather quickly and uh, are well beloved within the community. And, well, I'm happy to be part of It's good. Well, you're picking up a good operation here, a good business with a yep. good reputation. And then congratulations to you and I wish you nothing but success. And, and lean on this guy here today because uh, they know how to do it no right. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Mr. Walmer. Victor, how, how long ago was it when you came to town? I can't remember. It was it well, um, yeah, actually, we, we came to town. I, the business died in 1996 as a China cuisine. 19 what? 19 1996. 1996. And then, but at the time, uh, I have a partner, a couple partners, you know, and then it doesn't work out the way I like. So uh, I, I left and worked for my friend in, you know, other place. Yeah. And then in 2004, and then I buy out my former partner and then my family okay. on the home thing since 2004. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I just always have been here. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like Barbara said, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, as long as I can remember, you've right, always been right, here. Right, yeah. And your restaurant has always been great. And I know that you've always been a big supporter. I, I from the Little League, I know that you've always, you know, see the pictures up there, my kids up there somewhere. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, thank you for being a good uh, uh, contributing person to supporting our town and doing all you did and it's it's um, we'll miss you um, okay. glad you're again glad you're okay. staying involved um, mm -hmm. you know even through the property but um, we're gonna miss you okay. uh, uh, doing this but we know you'll do a wonderful job okay. uh, we welcome you and, and um, 
and the Little League can always use more sponsorship, so <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> Thank you. My kids will only eat Victor's food. <laughs> I literally, when we have Asian cuisine, even in my parents live in Malden, I have to bring it from here or well, they won't eat it. <laughs> and there's about a thousand restaurants in Malden that serve it, but they won't eat any of them. So that, that's just a testament because if my kids love it. So, but yeah, and Victor has been great. He, it's, um, what can I say? That it, Consistency. That's what I can say. Consistency. That's what you look for um, in restaurants. My parents like grew up in restaurants, and it just it's consistent, and you can tell pretty quickly when something's consistent. So, um, you know, congratulations on retirement. That's what it is. I know everybody wants to retire one day. So, and uh, and my kids will still only want to go there. So congratulations, just we'll have that customer. <laughs> I'll keep that comment in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, for me, it's so personal. <laughs> we go so far back, um, my kids and Victor's kids. Um, Jennifer was one of my Girl Scouts, and Richie and Ben went around, so um, so happy you're going to still be part of it. Even more yeah. happy that Ben is jumping in there. Um, and I just wish you and May all the best. I hope you can take it easy now and go travel and enjoy yourselves. And um, yeah, just the best of luck. And Thank you. I'm Thank just you. so happy that you're still going to be here. Thank you. Yeah, he's kind of a fixture. He and his wife are a fixture. So that's why Mr. Lewis is in the big shoes to fill. But I'm sure you're going to be do great. And I'm sure you're here for the long run, too. So we welcome you. Happy that you've been there and learning. They've been teaching me a lot. Yes, yeah. And it, even though I haven't known them as long as Mrs. Gonzalez, they know me and I know them, and that's really just the magic that happens when you operate a business like that. It's a small community, and everybody does know everybody, but it makes you feel like you're family when you go there because that's how they treat everybody. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how busy, crazy. How many people are there? They still take that time. You know, they feel like you're putting them out. They still take that time. It's really, it's really so well run. You know, so, so good luck, and we wish you the best of luck. And remember, if, remember all these faces. <laughs> and you know, I, we have to vote. But you know that if there's any questions or issues, you know, you you don't have to worry about coming to us either to ask those questions or whatever you have. Attorney Bowman, I'm sure. But if there's things that you're wondering about or questioning about, it, that's what we're here for too, is to help you make it a success too. So, all right, do we have a vote? One more oh, this is Gonzalez. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like that's the approach. Seems like that's the approach. Yeah. I'm sure this woman has her own ideas about that. <laughs> but, you know. Do you want to reconsider? We'll, we'll go in baby steps and accept it. Yeah, in baby right. steps. Yeah. All right. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve a transfer of the common particular alcohol license from China Cuisine Inc. to PH Wealth Inc. DBA China Cuisine, 235 Main Street, and to approve Shan Chan Wu as the new manager. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye. Thank you. What time are you open till tonight? I know. Can you extend the hours? What time are you open until? Too late. Is the kitchen still open? Yeah, but I just I just saw that. I didn't know they can they have a one o'clock license. Yeah. Eight to one, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. brunch. Brunch. <laughs> yes, but they typically close at ten. So oh, you know. they do close a little <laughs> <Friday>. earlier. <laughs> I guess they can if they want. North Reading closes early in general. Yes. All right. So right. Can we do we want to go back to COVID nineteen <laughs> update, Mr. Gilberto? <laughs> Keep it short and sweet. I already read it. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Madam Chair, through you, um, we did uh, issue a, an update on um, the COVID-19 situation here in North Reading on Friday of last week. Uh, it was fairly lengthy, um, quite a bit to report. Uh, I will just summarize it in um, saying that um, you know, we are seeing an improvement in both the daily incidence rate as well as the percent positivity rate um, compared to the high of uh, about three weeks ago. Um, and so that certainly is, is good news. Our COVID-19 working group continues to meet weekly to look at the data and uh, review um, the most updated available guidance. Um, I will just note that, um, as has been stated previously, we've been working to try to provide local testing options for North Reading residents. Um, we we're pleased that we were able to offer uh, uh, one alternative on Saturday between 10 and 1. Um, it was a week earlier than we were expecting to offer it, so the, it was a little bit more sparsely attended. Um, but our intention is to do that um, at least for the next few weeks on Saturdays here at the Town Hall from 10 to 1 by appointment. Um, and that information is available on the Board Health website. Town um, Hall or Town Hall? Yeah. It's at the Town Hall. Town Hall, yeah. Um, in the gym, yes. Uh, the second thing I'll just update on the testing is that uh, our health director, Bob Gracie, has been working with the regional, um, uh, health, regional departments of health, of public health, um, and uh, our, we expect to formally announce the opening of a regional testing site um, nearby. Um, we are anticipating that it will be in the Shriners, but that, that's uh, almost 100% confirmed. We're just waiting for the hiring to be completed for the staffing, and there'll be a formal announcement um, once that registration of the capability is live for our residents online. Um, uh, and we expect that that could be available as soon as next Wednesday, February 16th. Uh, the final thing I'll note, uh, and right after the last board meeting, um, the working group made a determination to purchase some uh, at-home testing kits. Um, we placed an order of uh, roughly 1,200 testing kits, some 200 or so of which have been uh, delivered and are being distributed to municipal employees uh, and to um, population served by our human services departments. We expect a larger distribution, which we will push out and distribute as well, and depending upon the demand, um, it'll probably go through those avenues to the most vulnerable first, um, and then we'll look to potentially a larger distribution uh, if the demand is there and if uh, we have available supply. Um, and so that's sort of a quick update. Uh, it was more than a page of written update that was pushed out on Friday, I know, but I just try to summarize things. Um, for folks. And I, I know you implemented, I think it was Mr. Walner's suggestion to use a reverse 911 to alert the public about the about the um, free, you know, the free testing, which was great. We did, yes. Because we did, so that, was, that stuff is so helpful to utilize the technology to spread the word. We so did so for, great, for the great testing. The, the signage was a challenge because our electronic signboard's not working. <laughs> uh, so we weren't able to, to utilize that, uh, but there will be a capital request for coming to replace those. Um, so we ask your support <laughs> when it comes up. <laughs> the old-fashioned way, right? Handwritten placard. Pigeon. <laughs> Test here. Pigeon. 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 All right. Questions uh, for Mr. Gilberto regarding that, Mr. O'Leary? Uh, and again, I'd like to applaud the um, Board of Health and Health Agent and Health Department and the administration for their efforts to get those testing sites up and going. It's been a, it's been a challenge for them, to say the least. Um, and uh, hopefully some more advanced notification for the upcoming ones, that whether it be through the reverse 911 or through the transcript or social media will heighten the percentage of people that are going to be participating. I mean, they only had 90 slots, and what do we have, 35 people participate on yes. Saturday? Um, you know, so next Saturday there'll be another 90 slots available, and if we get the word out you know, Wednesday, Thursday, so people can kind of plan on it if they want to get tested. Uh, it's a marvelous opportunity, local opportunity, because it's only targeted towards North Reading, um, which is terrific. And again, this more regional site that's looking to be set up uh, will be a little bit different, but again, much closer to, to home than uh, some of the other sites that we have to travel to if you want to get yourself tested. Um, today's rates came out again for the last two weeks. Uh, our positivity rate is still higher than any other community in the area here. Uh, just to let everybody know, we're 14.98% positivity rate. A lot of the other communities around us are around the 11 12 percent, so they're coming down. Some of them for the North Shore come down below 10 percent. So everybody still has to you know, do their bit, wear the masks, and uh, hopefully things kind of 
subside here so that we can get that back to some sense of normalcy. But it, it's, it's not going to do it unless we all uh, do our part. So uh, they want to applaud their efforts. Uh, there's another Board of Health meeting on uh, Thursday night that I'll be attending. And um, we'll see where it takes us. Thank you. Any other comments or questions to Mr. Gilberto? All set? No, I was just delighted to get the reverse 911. I never pick up the phone at home, but when I saw it come through, I just I was thinking, is that going to be it? And then it was. So I was delighted. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's the right message. It's, it creates right here. You can see it does create awareness and it makes people think about it. And your directions to the website was very good. I followed it and it followed through as it said. So, yeah, so good job. Somehow, the, both my work and personal phone and my home phone. Like, all lit up at the same oh, time. Okay. <laughs> it sounded like the alarm went off. Julian's like, what happened? Like, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, but it could be for anything. And then it's like, it's going to snow. <laughs> like, okay, it's going to snow. We're okay. So, yeah, it did work to the point. It will work because you can't ignore yeah. it. How many, people, how many people actually subscribe to the email? I think it's about 11,000 single points of contact. So there are duplicate numbers and emails that are Yeah, so there's three in my household, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, okay, it's, it's a good amount. Yeah, it's a good amount. Yeah. That's great, though. That's fantastic. It works. We use the community page, too? Yeah, we post it on the community page. Great. Great. All right, all set? We yeah. can move on to the next order of business, which is we're going to go to appointments of the library trustees. We're, we're going to hold off on youth services. So right. do do we have a motion, yep. Mr. Stuba? <clears throat> Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the library trustees for terms expire as follows. Three openings. <clears throat> Deborah, uh, yeah. Deborah Aldrich, incumbent then December 31st, 2024. Heather Ser uh, Servers, am I saying that right? Hopefully, December 31st, 2024. And Margot Shoup, associate member December 31st, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Stugo. Second by Mr. O'Leary. And I will just say as the liaison, these are names that are recommended by the trustees. They did interviews of candidates, and these were the names that were proposed. And of course, Mrs. Aldridge is a reappointment. She's a trustee serving right now. So um, the recommendations to appoint these three to the to the open um, positions. All right. Any questions? We have a, a, a roll call name vote on these individuals. Mrs. Aldrich, Mrs. Servers. Servers, S C R. Sievers. 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 I believe it's Sievers. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to get to the page, and I actually don't have my glasses, so I don't page know six. why I'm trying to it's get to the page. Page six. I, <laughs> page six. Oh, and Ms. Shop. 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 All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary. Deborah Aldrich, Heather Sievers, Margot Shop. Mr. Walter. Uh, Ms. Aldrich, Ms. Sievers, Ms. Shop. Mr. Studo. Ms. Aldrich, Ms. Sievers, Ms. Shaw. Ms. Gonzalez. Deborah Aldrich, Heather Sievers, and Margo Shaw. Got it. And um, Minnie is Ms. Aldrich, Ms. Sievers, and Ms. Shaw. So, unanimous. All right. Next order of business is legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for December 2021 in the amount of Fifteen thousand two eighty four seventy eight as follows: General thirty three ninety four seventy eight, Labor forty four zero seven fifty, Twenty Elm Street seventy four eighty two fifty for fifteen thousand two hundred eighty four seventy eight. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Studo, just one motion on the legal bills, right? That's it. Next order of business, town administrator's report. And we have a report for this evening. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, board promise, member review. I can't promise it'll be a short one next time. All right, board member reports. And all the new, we might as well roll them into one like we've been doing, Mr. Doing. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just in relation to water, wastewater, again, we've been busy and it's going to get busier. 
Oh yeah. But, uh, we're going to be meeting uh, much more often. Um, had the opportunity to uh, uh, speak with and meet the uh, consultants that we have for the market study and uh, the study to determine how the benefits are going to work out. Uh, pretty good working group. They have a very aggressive agenda and uh, their marching orders are pretty strict from a time constraint. They believe that they're going to be able to, to meet them all. There's going to be a considerable amount of outreach to the community in relation to the uh, wastewater uh, initiative that we have here, which is going to be very good. Uh, as far as uh, the survey has started already, Parker Street, Main Street, even up on 125, I went up 125 and I talked to my consultant, I said, hey, is that all, those are people up there on 125? And they were. So, uh, so again, all of this is moving forward um, quickly and aggressively uh, to get us the necessary information uh, so that the board can make <coughs> the board and the community can make an informed decision come this fall. So uh, very aggressive, a lot going on there, and we'll be hearing a lot more. Um, again, Hillview has been in the negotiations with uh, uh, a vendor to uh, take a look at uh, taking over the entire facility, uh, function hall facility, and uh, they're in the function business, so uh, there'll be more to report probably the next meeting or the meeting after the town administrator has more conversations with the individuals and parties involved. Uh, and the only other thing under all the new business, I just want to uh, congratulate the community again for uh, coming out during the special election. We had uh, a terrific turnout, uh, a lot of participation, and our threading had the distinction of being the highest, most positive vote for the new vocational school. It did win overwhelmingly uh, across the board. and. Uh, it's a great move for the community, it's a great move for the, for the district, and uh, it will serve as uh, our student population, vocational student population to come for generations to come. So congratulations for everybody who participated, congratulations to Mrs. Diamond, who's uh, gonna have a lot of work to do in relation to the, uh, the building committee, and uh, to Superintendent DeBarry down there. They have a lot of work to do, but they're very excited about it, and looking forward to moving forward with the project. But uh, I was very happy to see so many people participate, it was great. Yeah. Great turnout. All set. Thank you. Right. Mr. Fong. Great. Uh, let's see. So um, the uh, the uh, forest committee. We I wasn't there. I missed the walk. A nice January day. But they met with the senior landscape architect from a potential consultant we might be going with, and they did a walk through. They came up with um, side, uh, some ideas already that we can consider as we go forward to try to make Swan Pond more accessible and make it available for all of North Reading to participate with. So I think we're off to a good start. Um, and uh, the, the, the committee itself, there's really good energy there. So we're really moving forward to try to make that as good as possible. So uh, that's good there. Um, Phil Hertz, who we know is leading the uh, trails project, which is also now coordinated with the Willis um, uh, development in Linfield. Um, he just sent me while I was gone the, the results of their study. Um, and so I'm gonna meet with him tomorrow night, but it's a feasibility study has been completed on North Running Trails. They came up with about seven, eight different options. Um, I'll, I'll know more tomorrow, but I mean, he's, it's just been fantastic that Phil's been running this. The amount of detail and the thoroughness that he's done is just incredible. So uh, the North Running Recreational Trail is looking more and more probable, especially when you look at the vision for Willis, Willis Woods which was, Linfield was always our biggest, no, you can't go on our land. And now they, they're, they want us, plus the other neighboring towns, to preserve this area. And we will be connected to so many different areas that we're not connected to right now, when this gets all in place. So just like the magic is just happening. We have Phil, we have Willis Woods, and now we have a study that will, um, I'll be coming back to the board Phil will be coming back to the board because we'll be looking for some sort of money for design and stuff like that. But um, probably do it in June before we get to October. <laughs> I wouldn't want to cross paths with that one. So that'd be my goal is to make that happen by then. Um, and then let's see, uh, I'll be speaking, uh, I got invited by Aldersgate to come down on Sunday to speak about uh, a consolidated version of what I did on October 28th, talking about the seniors in town and stuff like that. So anybody who wants to go to church on Sunday, I'll be there 11 15 i'm going to condense it all down to 30 minutes so if you want to hear the short version come on down and come join me and i'll give a little talk and i'll give an update uh, some some updates about what we're doing here because we're all in support of it so it's all also i'm reflecting on what we've supported um last thing i'll say is on saturday my wife and i got to go to the middle school presentation 
we didn't know, but Kate was there. Uh, the chairperson was there, and she, uh, her son, was one of the stars of the show. I guess you'd say. And there's it's such a great production. He did a fantastic job. I mean, it was just fantastic. All the kids did a fantastic job. It's just such a. I mean, I had tears in my eyes. It was that good. It was really good to hear these kids. And I had to keep reminding myself: these are sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. And the amount, I mean, they did a two-hour production. It was singing, it was dancing, it was, uh, I mean, it, it, it was just, they're moving around the stage, they're moving props. It, it's just incredible that these kids this young could be doing this kind of stuff and pull it off the way they did. So um, congratulations to your, your, your son, congratulations to your family, and congratulations to the entire organization. This is really a special moment in their lives. So, you know, it, it's a testament to the investment that was made in that school yeah. and the time and effort and foresight that people are willing to invest, you know, in the arts. And it's made a huge difference. It's a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. we got to work on the sound system. That's yeah. one thing we got to work so on. So <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's, it's student run. So their actual okay. middle school is running the equipment. Yeah. So this is true and the same, the same for the high school. These are all student, student coordinated. Yeah, I think it's. A, I think it's honestly. I don't think it's necessarily the people behind the controls. I think it's the system it's the itself. System. It's always been a very difficult yeah. room to hear in, and you know it was pronounced on that night. So, anyways, that's a different issue. Yeah. If anybody wants to come forward with a better plan on the sound system, I can say you know I would be looking for it because it's, it is hard to hear. But anyways, it was fantastic, and congratulations to everybody who did that. And is it? I don't know her name. Miss uh, Miss I. Mrs. Lister. Yeah, I mean, just incredible to put that all together. Unbasing. That's great. Yeah. Thanks, Ms. Moss. Mr. Studo. I'll say. <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, uh, recycling, I just want to uh, touch on the pay as you throw program um, getting pretty much wrapped up. Um, kudos to them. They've worked hard on this, especially um, Dan Green, who, who has really devoted a lot of time to this. and should be coming for the board pretty soon. Potentially the 28th, yeah. The 28th, it's already on. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, so that they can explain it to us and, and um, try to get us on board with that. Um, so just just an update on that. And then um, CIT, <coughs> there was actually a lot going on. I saw behind the condensed that we talked about. We talked a lot about fentanyl in the community, a lot of fentanyl. Uh, being pressed into make pills and into marijuana, like it's really dangerous, you know. These, I mean, it's not all kids, but you don't know what you're getting anymore. Yeah, um, it's pretty scary. Uh, so, also, a lot of the talk was about Narcan and the fact that it's available in pharmacies, which I didn't even know. You can go into any pharmacy and it's free. Your your insurance will cover it. Um, and how important it is to really it, have that on you just in case. You ever, it's not going to hurt someone if they're not overdosing, hmm. um, but it can save someone's life. So um, that and I just these, not to interrupt. I yeah. just heard today on the news that fentanyl's even been showing up in herbal. Like, you yeah. know, like, it's not drugs, it's herbal, you know, it's herbal yeah, things that have been shown up there. It's really um, insidious is the only way to describe yeah. it. You can't really trust anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then DC, uh, is Amy still there? Are they, they I'm back? not sure. I'm okay, not sure. yeah. So Amy and Detective, did Detective Bucci go? I, I don't know. Oh, all right, sorry. sorry. Um, I believe it was. Um, they're in D.C. for um, a visit and um, a whole health and safety thing. So, um, yeah, All right. Okay, I want to just say quickly to thank the DPW. That storm was a pretty rough one, and they were really working early and then late and around the clock for us, trying to keep the streets clean. There's so many critics that sit back in the social media and want to, you know, criticize everybody, but we really do have a, a great working group of people that are um, 
working around the clock to keep the streets safe. So I just want to say thank you to our to our DPW for being on top of things and being on top of cleaning the roads. Keeping the roads clean. That one was a rough one and yep. everything froze over. So yeah. the safety, be, be careful because that's going to be, you know, a little mini public service announcement. I'm not saying anything anyone doesn't already know. But. No, and, and the roads look... 95% better than most everybody's driveway. I mean, so you try yes. and maintain your driveway. Try maintaining all the roads. Yeah. They've done, yeah. done a very good job. Yeah. A very challenging storm. Yeah, yeah they did a good job. More quick to criticize, and, and these are people that stayed up around the clock to keep everything safe. And they were out early um, to, to make sure that everything was solved and before it even hit. So um, that wasn't fun to clean up. So yeah. And, uh, we only have to do it a little at a time. They're doing it around the clock for a long time. So thank you to the DPW. I, I too wanted to thank the, the um, Mrs. Lister and the, the, um, the play was fantastic. It was a great group. And I love to see each year how many more students are involved in it. It's, it's grown tremendously. And that's really a testament to all of these the, the band and the, the band and the drama instructors and the the chorus and Mrs. Lister, Mr. Tatro, uh, Mrs. Kane and all of the people that helped them and they've just it's just kind of grown and grown and grown. It's just such a great family for these these kids to be in and grow up in. So there's a lot of hams. He was a villain, he played a villain. <laughs> now he knows how to do it for the rest of his teenage life. <laughs> Everybody kept saying he just played himself. <laughs> he's a ham. He's a ham and all his friends are here. But that was quite it was it was very fun. So it was great to see that. It's really amazing to see that how dedicated that those those teachers and helpers are for the kids. It's amazing. Yeah. And, so, I, and somebody told me their schedule, their rehearsal schedule was intense beyond belief. Yes, though. yeah. yeah I mean, My just, son said after the show, he, it was a huge, what am I going to do now? You know, <laughs> <laughs> he there every day. And, yeah. And, but just he had such a blast and so much fun. So it was great. Great, great job for all the students. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to also ask if we could just try to check our calendars and let's pick the second strategic planning while we're here because, um, you know, there are some initiatives that we, we want to talk about preceding town meeting and while we're into budget, um, we're yep. into the budget season so that we can get some of these on board yeah. with the town administrator. So. It is second half, but we also haven't met in so long. So if we can pick a day that works, that would be great. Any suggestions? <laughs> is the week of the 20th the school vacation? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably, I mean, I, that would work for me, but not work for me. In our next meeting here is the March 7th. Oh, March. I have so February 28th, right? 28th. Are we not we, we have meetings February 28th and then March 5th, a Saturday, for the Saturday budget hearing. Oh, I didn't have that done. I don't, I don't have that either. So we're not meeting on the 7th? Uh, <laughs> no, no, we're not meeting on the 7th. All right. Was there, was there a reason why we weren't meeting on the 7th? I, we, the schedule we had discussed in December was a meeting the 14th and the 28th. All right, March. I can put that in here. Does the 7th work for the board to be... No, I'm, I'm, well, I won't be around from the 7th to the 15th. I'm actually going to miss the 14th meeting unless okay. I can zoom in. But, um. Yeah, I'm going to be gone from the 7th Let's to the 15th. Let's do it on the 17th at St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, make it easier. Corn beef and cabbage? I'm sorry. I was thinking green beer. That too. <laughs> Don't make faces Italian. <laughs> what about on the 21st? Do you want to do it on Monday? We'll put some red sauce on it. <laughs> <laughs> or would you rather do it on the 16th on a Wednesday? Would that be too early, Steve, coming back? Uh, no. So do we have a, um, we typically do it on, uh, what did we do before? We did it on a Monday night, the last uh, We one? did it on an off Monday yeah. night, I think, last time, but we 
jackpot. We've okay. done it either then or on the Wednesday or right. midweek. Could be whatever right. works for our scheduling. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Whatever the whatever we can just lock in when everyone's here too. We, we don't want to have yeah. someone zoom in. And does the 16th work or the 21st work? Both of those work for me. 21st is good. Okay. Mr. Gilberto, does 21st work for you? Two, I, can do. I believe so, yes. Is, is, is one or the other better for you? I don't think so. I don't know that will. They're both, they're both terrible for <laughs> 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 Mr. Studo, does either one of those, one or the other, work for 21st? 21st? Yeah, why not? All right, let's lock that in. Every Don't be time. so excited about it. I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out my, if you saw my three different calendars He's I keep like, looking yeah, through. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's there do no good day. So like for it's strategic plan part two on the 21st. And are we 6 p.m. for that, Mr. Gilberto? It works for me. Sure. Okay. So we'll Does that work for six. everybody else? Yep. What time? 6 p.m. 6? Six? We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. contact you for an order for dinner, which we'll bring for 6 o'clock. And will we be at the police station again? Uh, we'll confirm that, but I expect that's where we'll be. Okay. Great. All right. And before we adjourn, can I just welcome back Maureen to the meeting? Maureen, the corner's been in quite a while. Right. It's a couple, a couple of years almost. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you, wow. COVID. I kind of remember when she used to be over there. <laughs> Are we all set? We good? Do we um, Madam Chair, I, one item I guess while we're all here um, with regard to the Saturday budget hearing uh, the past couple of years we've done that virtually it traditionally was held in person uh, prior to that uh, I could tell you that I, I believe that the Finance Committee at this point in time is conducting all of its meetings virtually so I expect that they are likely to participate virtually in a hybrid setup but we know the hybrid setup does have challenges so I just want to Get some feedback as to what what we're hoping hoping to do. So, would you prefer to have that virtually? I I, I mean I, I think we can do it either way, but I think if folks are open that's, to doing it virtually, it's a long meeting to have virtual. Yeah, can we, that's can we like do it really here and they meeting. can come in virtually? They, they can. I would just caution. Like I'm getting that's a note right now. Challenge, yeah. my, my internet connection is unstable. Um, but um, I, that is an option for them, but I do know. And They're I not comfortable it. with I mean, if the numbers look, again, everything's dependent, right? But if the trend stays the way it is, I mean, is there a way to just, I don't know. I, I, I don't mean, at, at what, at what point. I do Mr. Studo. I think we're in a, now we're in a new environment of doing these meetings. So this is part of what we have to, we have to get up to speed with doing these hybrid meetings because it's likely the legislature is going to change and simply roll this in, you know, in April. So this is going to be a new way for us to conduct our business anyway. So whatever's wrong with the technology, we need to figure that out so that we can host hybrid or all virtual, what have you. I, I understand, but what I'm saying is this, like, this can't, the, the, again, it, if the hybrid or if we do the all Zoom and it turns into like a six, eight hour problem, that's, that's a problem. No, these meetings are not traditionally six hours. Yeah, but, well, but they, they it, used to go from about eight to one. They used to go. And with Zoom, it's going to be worse. Eight o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. Uh, but then we've been encouraging our department heads to cut short their their presentations, right. not get into the, the weeds and the details of all the budgetary presentations. Uh, so we've curtailed that a bit. Perhaps I should have led with that. Yes. <laughs> I'm being asked by the department heads what the expectation is, too, for the yes. presentation. And yeah. I think folks are okay with abbreviating their presentations as they did last year and as some departments had to the year before. We certainly want to meet the expectations of the board and the community in whatever we present. Right. So if folks are okay with something abbreviated, you know, we'll certainly do that. Yes, and I, I know that it's helpful, but some departments come in with the same presentation every year about the thousand and one things that they do and check them off and read a list of We really need to hear, you know, what's the what are the issues you're facing? Really streamline. What, what do you see that will help you do your job better? What do you need that will help you do your job better? What's the cost attendant to that? What if, how, if, you know, what do you, how, are you, how are you anticipating that 
you know, needs, wants, you know, and, and then, you know, obviously we're, you know, we're reliant upon the financial team to tell us what we can and can do, but to, we don't really need to, I don't think we need to hear a, a, someone reading a presentation of 32 slides of the things that they do, because we already know that. I think we need to hear, you know, this is what we'd like to do, or you know, this is a grant we'd like to apply for, or this is a new type of software that'll help us get the work done more efficiently. I think those are the types of things that would help us to hear, you know, how we're going to move forward versus, you know, the things that we already know. But so, I'm one in five. So. I, I have a question too about procedurally, right? Just so I know for my own, who who sets the format of this meeting? So if it comes to, well, yeah. okay, so I'm just saying that because I, I agree with what you said, Ms. Manipelli, but the way yeah. I've read the rule that might become permanent is that whatever board is having the meeting gets to decide whether it's going to be in person or not. And I'm not saying uh, whatever, we can decide what we want, but I feel that, you, you know. You are muted. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, did Abigail have a way of putting the case in Members of the board can attend in person or virtually, mm -hmm. and that's what we have to accommodate, members of the board. Well, now if we are meeting in public, the public is welcome to come in person. And if we're doing a hybrid meeting, the public is, can decide, do they want to join us virtually or in person? But we need to make that happen if we're holding a hybrid oh, meeting. Oh, but I, my question was, though, is who decides the format of the meeting? Because to me, it seems like from some other boards, there are other boards that they're doing in person only when they can, meaning it seems like that there is, there is something that somebody has to set the format. So I'm saying that, you know, and again, I'm only one vote, like you said, but if it's a select board who sets the format, and we put it to a vote or the chair decides, and that's, I think, the way it, it is or it should be. But I feel that, like, again, in reality, I just feel that if it's something where it's technically a meeting of the select board, where others are coming to advise us, then the select board should be the one that decides the format, not everybody else. That's all I'm, I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I understand your point. If it goes virtual, that takes a lot longer. Yeah, certainly. and that's because... You know. and, if, and if we're half of us are joining virtually and half of us are in person. If this, we don't really vote at that meeting. We're just hearing from the department and about the department, but we don't really vote. But if we have to vote, that's part of the reason why it takes so long on, on the virtual yeah. meeting. You have to do a roll call. But Mr. Okay. Gilbert, I saw your hand go up, so. I would just say, we have some time to figure this out. I, I do oh. think that between the chair and I and the chair of the Finance Committee, in the IT department, we could try to work a little bit more on the technology to offer a hybrid so that we could convene in person here and allow folks who wish to participate remotely to do so. Yes. I think that that's achievable. Yes. There could be any number of reasons why someone wants to participate virtually. Any number of reasons why. And I think that we should accommodate that right now. We are still in a pandemic. So we need to accommodate that. Can, can, I guess I would just ask, can we state a preference that we'd like people to come in and give them a block of time? You're at 8.30, you're at 9, you're at 9.30? Well, that's yeah, usually what it that's is. What Mr. Yeah, that's what All right. Suggests. Well, just because th then, you know, you just have whatever that group is. And right. I mean, anybody can show up if they want to, right? But in general, they'll come at 9.30 and they'll leave, you know, at a certain time. And again, Chair. And you'll, you'll be moving in and out. So. Chair Minipelli, I say that because it is in my opinion that some from now until the day they die will not change their stance. Right. So, at, and it just said, the, it, that's, that's why. So it's something where it could be five years from now and we could eradicate the flu and some people will never again attend an in-person meeting. So I, something's gotta give because I, I just, again, that's why I say it and I've kept, I've been pretty keeping my mouth shut about this, but that's what I'm saying that like eventually that, you know, the idea that Zoom allows even more, you're, it just that people get into this to communicate with the public a certain way and eventually something's gotta give. 
So that's what I'm saying that like it could be five years from now and certain people will never come to an in-person meeting again ever. Okay, and that's their decision to make. And that's, they can make that choice. But I do think this technology is here to stay. I agree. And it's here to stay not just in this realm, but in all other realms. Yep. So whatever we need to do to get it working properly, <laughs> not you, Mr. Studo. Whatever we need to that, do. That was me by accident. Is, <laughs> is we should do that. So we're prepared because it is here to stay. And it's, it's here to stay, at least in my profession. It's here to stay, and it's probably going to be here to stay in your profession. Well, it can't happen in my Not yours. <laughs> but you know, okay. <laughs> oh, see, we were we were almost yeah, done. We were almost but done. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. O'Leary yeah. has his hand raised, and yeah. let me just add to that: with the this new technology, with the vaccine, they probably will figure out a way to eradicate the flu. So I think that that's a good a good a good, a good thing to suggest that. Maybe they will do that in five years, and I well, hope they do, the because it'll it'll probably be utilized for all different types of disease and things like that. But in any event, if someone chooses not to come to a public meeting, that's we're used to that. You know, <laughs> we don't have an audience most of the time. I'm not talking about the participants. You're talking about the people that have to come and correct the other right. team. Right. Yeah. I understand that, but for right now, it's. You know, right now, if that's it could be any number of reasons, and we just have to work to accommodate that. I think. Yeah. Can I ask if um, are you going to send out an invitation for that? Because did any of us have that in our calendar? So <laughs> it was on. I thought it was on a listing of meeting dates we discussed, but apparently it was <laughs> I, I didn't have it. Out. Late last week, I had to have a conversation, <laughs> and it came up, and I said. Oh, I didn't have that on my calendar. Yeah, so none of us <laughs> I didn't have it. All right, Bill, I think no. you just picked that date for us, and uh, now we right. have it on our calendar. So I said, oh, let me put that on my calendar. It's all right. We know now, but, but you know. Madam Chair, just in relation to the, the, you, the you status. You had a meeting, none of us would have been here, yeah. so. Is it 8 a.m.? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it, of course, what we used to do, too, is whichever department was willing to bring in the muffins and the scones and things oh. like that, got the first <laughs> slot. But we don't do that anymore. And Mr. Yeah. Hanlon, who was head of the DBW, was notorious for that. He brought in the best scones That's from someplace great. out in Auburn or something. So why did fit. we get rid of that? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, it was great. It was great. But anyway, no, but just in relation to the, the meeting format, you know, first of all, we, we meet, you know, as a board, but in this particular case with the budget thing, I mean, the Finance Committee is directly involved, and there's, you know, nine members of the Finance Committee, and for whatever reasons, as the Chair was pointing out, they don't choose to be here in person. The opportunity is there to meet those needs and those desires. And the legislature has a lot of, and it, I believe what the chair is saying is correct. It's going to become meetings of the future. And there's no reason why it should. I don't have to have somebody sitting here in front of me to ask and get their opinion you know, on anything. The technology is available. We need to come up to speed with the technology. We need to make people um, able to participate easily. Mm -hmm. by whatever means is legal and this is now legal it's going to be legal and we need to be able to accommodate not just the general populace out here or, or the finance committee but even members of the board individually you know we can't make it you know if you broke your leg or something skiing and you can't get out there's no reason why you can't participate you should be allowed to you know and the technology is here the laws are going to be changed to allow for it we need to recognize that and we need to get on board and get the technology to a point where, where it can be done so you know, I don't disagree that there's some people who are not never going to change their mind about things, never. Uh, no matter what side you're on. You know, so that's a given. That's how we can agree on that. <laughs> you know, but that doesn't mean at the expense of people's ability to participate when the technology is I, here that we should do that. We I agree with the hybrid approach. However, seeing it here when we've tried to do where we have to interact, I think we did it once when like, you know, the school committee, we don't have the technology. This was brought up when we first talked about this. So I mean, we're doing the best we can, but we don't have it, okay? Um, a $12.99 a month subscription to Zoom is not the technology we need <laughs> to break it to everybody here. So. I, I know what you're saying, Mr. Studo, and I can't, I don't see even what the, I don't see what the town administrator is seeing. I can't see if someone <laughs> raises their hand. I, 
I don't have that, so I'm, that is a little bit clunky in order to get through it. But it, this is new. This is new to all of us. But I do agree, Mr. Lair, that it's here to stay. I do agree. I just think that right now, we, you know, I, I could see, I just, I hope everybody realized, I could see that meeting spiraling into technical difficulty horror. It, 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 it could, but it, it's not likely. And in, in, in the budget meetings, oh. the Finance Committee has poured through the documents, and they have specific, they, they really zoned in. Their questions aren't. 35 questions. There might be two or three questions that are really specifically zoned in on what the, the budget documents are, you know, just like ours, you know, and it's, you know, it's still a necessary thing to, to meet with the departments because we, it's one of the only times we have the chance to interface with them. Yeah. So it's good and it's important for us too to hear what they've done, their accomplishments and things like that. But finance committee really they they really are pointed in terms of the, the, the dollars you know and the requests and, and things well the individual opinion. members of the board too so it's a you know, depending where our interests and concerns lie uh, it, but maybe that what we should now just focus on the direction we should give the department chairs as far as the department heads and, and you know to me it's you know what have you had for this year you know how have you had made the adjustments here? what are you lacking in yeah. you know yeah. You know, you know, I'm thinking of the fire department. I mean, we've got potential for grants money coming through, adding up to 12 more firefighters. Uh, they've been advocating for eight new firefighters at a minimum for years, you know, and we get that every year. And, and the pitch isn't going to change. It's a question of whether are we going to make the investment and can we afford to make the investment? And if we get a grant, are we going to be able to afford to, to carry it forward? So those types of discussions you need to have. Uh, but from that department head, we need to hear this is what we have, current staffing. If we stay the same, this is what it's going to cost us. This is what we're going to need more in the way of resources. You know, equipment is whatever it's going to be. Same thing with, you know, elder services. We all have, uh, and actually uh, human services, social services in general. We're all on board with the need for expanding in that particular area. We're going to have a new head of the whole department there coming on board, a new elder services director, new town clerk. You know, Got a whole host of departments that are in a state of flux right now, uh, and we need to be. We need to hear from the administration as to where do they see us, not just of the, the, this budget season, but two to three years down the road. Where do, how can we plan on that? That's what I want to hear, rather than. You know, we'll give them the pat on the back. And they, they'll do a fantastic job with the resources we've been given them, that, that have been given to them. But um, we need to know where do we have to go from here? How can we adjust? Yeah. And. Uh, how long is it going to take us to make those adjustments and then how much is it going to cost us? You know, where are we going to invest that money in what area? So, to me, that's what I want to hear from the department heads. You know, this is what you got last year. This is the level of services you've been able to provide. Where are we lacking and how do we have to adjust? You know, you know and I didn't, I'm not meaning to be disrespectful either about just sitting and reading off a presentation. We got that, so we've read it. I feel like we should, you know, just zone in on what what were the accomplishments, what were the challenges. I, I really want to hear that. What are you proposing? Things like that. Um, we know what they do, and and we don't really need to hear that, you know, ticking off a list. We just need to hear. And of course, this is an unusual time, so they may have faced new newer challenges that they weren't anticipating. Things like that. But that's really what we need to hear. Where are they at? But again, yeah. special services, you know. Yes. They've been busy, 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 busier than right. they've ever been. Right. You know, most people don't know that, but right. you know, what and do they I need think resources? That's, that can be accomplished in a, in a pretty, you know, um, consolidated presentation that does, we're not reading along with the slideshow like that. Right. Know, of, you know, a novel. <laughs> Is so to speak, and I, I'm not, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but um, and I don't, I'm not meaning to be disrespectful because, like Mr. O'Leary said, we know all the things that they, they really sure. are, are, are working hard for the for all of us. So, um, does that give you an idea? It's perfect. I appreciate okay. the feedback. Thank you. Yeah, and I don't think it'll be a six or seven hour. I think the longest presentations are typically from fire and police, right? Correct. Those are the two the that DPW, take. The DPW is such a wide amount that can yeah. be long too, but yeah. we can, we'll can we focus it. Yes, sure, sure. And last year it felt shorter because you did. We did focus. You already been going yeah. more that way. Yeah. Yeah. This so. year it's not going to just be streamlined requests. You're going to see requests for things that we probably won't be able to do. 
and I'll, I'll try to direct folks to focus on that. Yeah. I think that's also something that we should hear about. Yeah. But I, I understand. Yeah. What, one, thank you. One practical idea. <laughs> I don't know if this will be helpful or not, but it would be no problem for me to bring my iPad in and zoom in, and then we could actually see Zoom right in front of us. I mean, like, literally, why not, right? I don't even have my iPad. Oh, you mean, I mean be here, but also have our own Just have zoom. a second screen. Have our iPad right here. Hook it in. If we have enough bandwidth. I have it here right now. I have it muted. I mean, I'm and then we'd be able to not have to look up here. No, wow, this is you are coming up with some crazy This is my... Just a workaround, that's all. This is my device from home. I don't even have my iPad. From we confiscated it, right? right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, it's just an I mean, just think about it. Like, I mean, if I had a monitor right in front of me, it'd be a lot easier to keep track than cranking my head and looking, right? Anyways, and I'm used to double screens, so it's an idea. Just think about but it. But this one meeting. You'd probably need more bandwidth, though. I mean, whatever. Yes. You'd have to um, run some sort of supercharger. Internet grabber thing. We'll be expecting to get that as a budget. We'll all be budget. crashing. It's going to be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll Anyways, just an idea. resources that we can Anyways, spend on that. I mean, I might just yeah, bring well, it in because I believe we have resources that we can spend on that stuff. Yes, yeah, I'm sure that. <laughs> so we're not asking for your But budget. we could try it. Bring it up in the finance committee. No, it's we go have to capital, but it's got to go to capital, which. All right. Any last. No, I know. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Mr. Gilberto cannot make the motion. I'll second his motion. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Mr. Studo's motion. Mr. O'Leary seconds. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.